Hello. Next up, let's go to instances and select instance on points. And now we can plug in something down here. I will use a mesh primitive grid. Now this plane is a little big for me. I want to scale it down and I'm going to do this inside of a node group yet again. And I'm going to put both size inputs into the same input here. I'm going to look for a scale instances node. We can already influence the general scale, but we cannot yet influence randomness. So let's move it over and into the scale input random value. Putting a value of one into minimum would nullify this random effect. And we're going to use that to our advantage. I will create a color mix RGB input, connect this factor to the group output and delete the mix node. Now I have this nice little slider input here and I will plug in the factor directly into the min value and now I can slide it from uh, total randomness to zero randomness. I will yet again invert this slider so it makes a little bit more sense. Use a utilities math node and subtract this input from a value of one. So one minus one equals zero, one minus zero equals one. Now let's finally decrease the scale a little bit like this and I'm going to increase the randomness because I like it. Let's give it a material. First of all, we're going to need a material and we also have to assign it here, otherwise it won't show up. Switch over into one of the rendered modes. What I am looking for is a nice gradient texture. Zoom into one of these particles. Let's set it to spherical. The center of the sphere is located at zero, zero, and it has too much of a radius. If we would now shift the sphere over, it would be too big for our plane. So we will have to scale down this spherical gradient and move it over. That's quite simple. Node wrangler enable, control T. We get this little quick mapping and texture coordinates set up. I will scale it down first by increasing this value. Always a little bit confusing, but that's just how it is. We just have to shift this location to minus one meter. Next up in the material settings, let's just quickly go to blend mode, set it to clip and shadow mode also to clip. Connect a converter color ramp and set it to constant. And now if I lower down this white value, I get a perfect, wonderful fitting sphere and connect it to the alpha. You've made a wonderfully, infinitely high resolution sphere without having to use an icosphere as a particle or something ridiculous like that. And that's a lot better for your computer, believe me. Let's give it a, a white emissive texture. Why not? Let's activate Bloom for fun. Our particles are flat, boring planes and we want to rotate them that they always face a camera. Well, I've already got a camera and I can integrate it into our geometry node system simply by drag and dropping it into here. Now, we need two points in order to calculate a vector. If you remember from school, one point minus another point equals a vector. So we have the location of the camera due to this node and we can simply look for the good old and already known position node, which will supply position points for each individual point that's floating around here. And subtracting them from each other couldn't be easier. Vector math set to subtract. Nothing could be more comfortable. And there we go. Now we want to rotate all these points, or these instances maybe, that's how you could call them. Well, how convenient, because if I look for rotate instances, here they appear. Let me connect them in here and let's plug it into rotation and see what happens. Well, it doesn't work right away. If I look through the camera, it's all a little bit weird because we have calculated like a vector between two points, but that does not really equal rotation yet. In order to convert it into a viable rotation, we have to take a look for the align Euler to vector node. Well, it sounds complicated. It's rather easy though. I just drop it in here and voila. Well, not quite voila because Blender tends to connect the wrong input by default, unfortunately for us. We just have to switch it over to vector instead of rotation. If I now go into the camera, you can see the particles have disappeared. Um, though if I switch through the axes and go to Z, I might find, wow, the particles have appeared now take a look how the particles behave when I go through them with the camera and notice how in the camera view they always stay oriented correctly. Do you see how the particles try to always face the camera origin? Which leads to the illusion that the particles always face in the right direction if we look through the viewport of the camera. Now next up, let's go back into the shader editor and load up a picture. By default it's going to be connected to UV in which case it won't be projected correctly, I had to switch it over to generated 
in order to get the proper UV coordinates for the individual particles. Now if I take a look through the camera and hit play, you can see that they are all quite stationary and I want to rotate them because, come on, that's fun. Rather than creating a second rotate instances node, there is also a rotate Euler node and I can drop it in between here and then influence the rotation of the particles. Now they kind of seem to behave weirdly because you have to switch it over to local first and now I can rotate them properly around the z-axis. We all know what we have to do. We have to look for a combined xyz node and now I want to animate my rotation. And last time I cleverly left out this time group here and I'm just going to connect it into Z. Now it's pretty difficult to see if they are actually rotating, so let me quickly dial down the speed and all the movement. Well, you have to have very good eyes to see this very slight rotation, so we'll have to work with math nodes yet again. This time I will choose multiply add, I will tell you why in a second, and I will use this multiplication factor as the speed. Now they rotate faster, but pretty uniformly bad, stupid. Let's look for a random value node and connect it. How about a speed between one and a dozen? Wow, would you look at that? They all rotate at different speeds and they are all clustered and weird and random. That's nice. Now let's go back to frame number zero. Wah, wah. As you can see, now they all have the same rotation at frame one. How can that be? We are pretty close to zero here, so at this point not a lot of random multiplication has happened. It kind of stacks up the further we go to the right, and now all the orientations are pretty random, but they kind of all start at the same position. Now, how about we add a random value now on top of this, essentially before the multiplication even kicks in. Now I could add another math add node, or I was a clever big boy and already chose multiply add and can just connect this one up as well. Problem solved, we are all happy. They are now clustered randomly, rotating at random speeds and all of that good shit. 